Sok. I'm the senior associate doctor here at the Life Design Center. It's my pleasure today to introduce our speaker for tonight's Eat by Design seminar. Uh, Dr. Jamie is the CEO of Life by Design, a company with 25 certified locations worldwide, just like this one. So we're not alone. We have a bunch of there's a bunch of us. He also speaks internationally, and I know that you will get a ton of valuable content from tonight's uh, seminar. So without further ado, Dr. Jamie Richards. Okay. Welcome, everybody, on Facebook Live as well. Welcome to my crowd here. Permission. I'm going to get permission right away so we can get into this. <laughs> See, if you, if you were only getting this through Facebook Live, you wouldn't actually capture any of that whatsoever. This is, we're talking about the bonuses that you're getting here tonight. These are the bonuses. So housekeeping stuff, bathrooms are in the back, male, female bathrooms. There is food over here for people who want some. The cookies are grain-free, which we'll talk a bit about tonight, why we would provide grain-free cookies. There's water there and glasses that are recyclable and some other stuff we'll chat about as we go. So I'm going to get you guys to actually put your hands up here in a second. I want to make sure everybody's awake. And so I said we're better than people who have to be at home and watch it on Facebook Live because you get to interact. Now, that might not be good for some of you, but we're going to get you interacting here today. Here's the question. Most people here know me. We have people from different walks. We have some people who are fit club athletes, some people who come to Extraordinary Life Chiropractic for corrective care, some people who do both. The one thing hopefully the people who do know me know is that I'm going to be direct tonight. So before I do that, just to make sure I can do it, I want everybody to put their hand up if I have permission to be direct, to be blunt, right? To say things that might make you feel even a little bit uncomfortable. And that's okay, because when we look in the mirror, there's a reason why. So I start every seminar, almost every seminar with this slide. And every year I change this slide to the next year, the next year, the next year, and the next year. Do you understand why I'm able to do that? It's because every single year, things are going like this in terms of the health statistics, not just for Canada, but internationally. Right, so I wanna talk briefly about that, and this is the reason why we wanna be so direct. It's easy for us tonight, I could tell you what to eat in about five minutes and you could all go home. But the truth is, your ability to follow that template is going to be more beneficial to you if you understand why I'm gonna tell you what to do. And then if I give you the action steps on how to do it, I'm gonna give you guys tools, I'm gonna to give you some tricks, I'm gonna give you some of the things that we use, and I'm gonna give you some handouts and some strategies that you can take with you. Also at the end, um, I'm gonna ask for your feedback, and if you give me the feedback, good or bad, then I'm gonna go ahead and send you the Eat by Design manual as well. Okay, so we'll send that right to your inbox tomorrow or the next day. Here's the deal. Now these are Canadian statistics, but every year you're looking at 50,000 people that are dying, it's not just diagnosed, that are dying from heart disease. 70,000 from cancer. I mean, I don't think there's probably a person in this room that hasn't been personally touched by cancer or had someone in their life that's affected either currently by cancer or who has unfortunately succumbed to cancer, right? That's so common now and we're seeing that trend continue and continue and continue. And of course, part of what we've been told for so long is that the reason this is happening is because you know, our genes are bad, or my mom had cancer, so I'm gonna get cancer. My dad has diabetes, so I'm gonna get diabetes. What I'm here to tell you tonight is some good news is that's not the case. There's definitely a genetic component, but I want you to think about genes like this. Genes are like you know, having the gun, your lifestyle is pulling the trigger. Okay? So you might have some predispositions in your genetic code, but how you live your life and the choices you make have a far greater impact than you probably ever thought or been told. This is worldwide, 347 million cases of type 2 diabetes. Now, to me, it starts to get shocking when you think about kids. We're very passionate about kids. If you come here on Saturdays, you see the little kids running around. If you come at 4 o'clock, you see the teens running around here at the Fit Club. If you come over to Extraordinary Life Chiropractic, you see all kinds of little kids and infants and babies. Why? Because as much as I want you guys to be well, the choices that you're making right now are the same choices that you're passing down to your kids and your grandkids. Now, you might not be conscious of that. After tonight, you're going to be. At least that's my goal tonight is that you leave here. And it's not to say you're going to make this massive overhaul with your lifestyle. 
although that would be great. What it means is that you're going to be conscious because that's really the first step in change, right? Is being aware. Up to this point, you might not even be aware of what's in your cupboards, of what's in your fridge, of how it's affecting your body. And the real difficulty is, is it doesn't affect you in a moment, at least not in any perceivable way that you can feel. I had a mentor one time and he said, wouldn't it be great if every time you took a drag off a cigarette, you died for five minutes, right? You might actually think twice about smoking. But the fact is, those years that come off your life are typically at the end, right? The ones that most people are already seeing decline at a significant rate, they're thinking, well, I don't really want those years anyway, so that's fine. We'll deal with that when we get there. The mentality has to be every single choice that you make matters, right? We teach that to our doctors at all of our life by design practices. Everything matters, right? If you walk into the facility, I'm going to guess it looks like everything matters, right? Nothing has been overlooked. Nothing has not been thought of. The same needs to be true with the way you approach your life. Now, I'm not suggesting you become a perfectionist with your health because that can actually go too far to the other side. I call those people health achondriacs, right? You have hypochondriacs and they have health achondriacs. Now, hopefully I don't offend anybody, but a health achondriac would be somebody who, you know, they're really concerned with their you know, vitamin B 426, right? Something that's really not that important, and that doesn't exist, by the way, but something that's really not that important, they're really focused on it. What we want you to do is be focused on the big, most important pieces, okay? How many people have heard the analogy of the rocks in the sand? It's a great analogy, so I'll give it to you to start tonight. Stephen Covey is a, a very famous, he wrote the book, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And then he went on to write many books around that type of information. Here's what he said. It's the rocks in the sand. I want you to imagine your life like a jar or like this glass. And the rocks are the biggest, most important things in your life. The pebbles are the next. And then the sand is the stuff that doesn't matter. Here's what most people do with their life and their health. Is they try and fill the glass by putting the sand in first, then the pebbles, and then they try and jam the rocks into this glass. So if we take health as an example... They think about, oh, I need to stop drinking coffee or I'm not drinking enough water. And those things are important, but those things are maybe pebbles at best. And I wouldn't even advise you to stop drinking coffee, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason this is going to be Charlie's Cafe over here, okay? But when it comes to the biggest, most important things, that's the way you make big dramatic changes in your health is you figure out what are the rocks. So obviously here at the facility, we've tried to incorporate the rocks, right? Food movement, spine and nervous system health, mental state and psychology. If you just do the big things and be consistent with the big things, you would be blown away by the results that you'll get. I mean, depression, here's one that's, I didn't know this until I got into practice. And I started looking at the intake forms of people that were coming into the office. I didn't realize, you know, as a, as a young, excited doctor at age 25, excited to change people's lives and help them. I didn't realize that so many people suffered from depression and anxiety. It, was, it, it really scared me as a young doctor because you know, up to that point I was generally happy and never really had to experience anything to that degree. And now we're seeing this not just in people who are middle aged, we're seeing this in children, we're seeing this in teenagers. So why am I talking about this stuff? Simply because all the things I'm gonna talk about tonight matter. They all play a role in this. So if someone's experiencing depression or they're experiencing difficulty losing weight or they're experiencing difficulty with their skin or energy levels, body composition, digestion, moods, if they're on a bunch of medications, this is not just diet. We're going to spend tonight talking almost all about diet, almost entirely about diet, but I don't want to lose the context here. This isn't about just eating food, okay? It's about making our body work the way it's supposed to work. There's a reason the building is called Life by Design Center, right? This idea that we're designed to be healthy. I mean, you walk in the front door, you might have walked by it a hundred times without noticing, but now you remember it says, we believe every human being is designed to be extraordinary. You're supposed to be healthy. That's the default state. So if you have this basic premise where you start, and that's that you're supposed to be healthy, if you're not, what does that tell us? tells us that something's not working, right? You're not a product of bad genes, at least not 95% of the time. You're a product of your choices, okay? So I want you to be honest about this. You don't have to put your hand up. You don't have to say you're experiencing XYZ conditions, but 
Step one, when I talked about awareness, is looking in the mirror and being honest about it. Right? And I, I usually say it in a, a much more colloquial way, which is, you know, how's that working for you? People come into the practice and they tell me all the different things that are happening with their health. I go, great, so what are you doing? Well, not a whole lot. How's that working for you? Or I'm on this diet, or I'm taking these medications, or here's my <coughs> exercise program, or in most cases, here's my lack of exercise program. I sit 10 hours a day, I play with my computer all the time. How's that working for you? It's not. So you have to recognize that first, and then you can start to come up with some type of plan or strategy, and here's the big picture. I'll give you kind of the, the end of the movie before we get there. All the good stuff happens from doing the right stuff consistently over long, 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 long periods of time. Everybody wants the opposite, right? How can we do this with the shortest amount of time, with the least amount of investment, with the least amount of pain? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but I know the answer to actually getting results. So let's start talking about some of this stuff. Question one we have to ask ourselves and be honest about is why are we so sick? And I'll tell you what the Journal of Applied Physiology said, and this quote really encapsulates what we're gonna talk about tonight. It says there's overwhelming evidence that illness and disease are from living incongruently with our genetic requirements for life. Here's what this is saying in lay person's terms. It's saying that our body has developed to need certain things, right? There's a reason why we need oxygen and other things don't need oxygen. It's because that's what we've developed to require. There's certain nutrients your body's designed to need. Just like for a plant, there's certain nutrients the plant needs. If you go in opposition to what your design is, guess what happens? Your body breaks down, right? You ever try to drive a car that's designed to have normal gasoline and you try and put diesel in it? How does that car work? Not very well, because that's not the factory specified fuel for that car. So you have a factory specified fuel, you have a factory specified movement pattern for your body, hence the requirements. So here's the formula, and I, I think of all the things you take away from tonight, if you just take this, you'll do the right stuff. I'll give you all the things you need to do, and we'll get into that now, but this is the formula, and this applies not just to your food, not just to your movement, it applies in every area, relationships, finance, every single thing. I call this the success formula. Consistent, congruent action. So what that means is not only do you have to do the right stuff, which is correct principles, and I'll give you an example here, but you have to do it consistently over and over and over and over and over, right? I know lots of people join the Fit Club, and you know, in the first six months, yes, they wanted a big change. There's a change happening in your body, whether you recognize it or not, but that change will continue every single time you train. That change will continue every good meal you put in, every time you have a spinal checkup, every time you have a good night's sleep. You continue to move in the right direction. So you have to be consistent, number one. You have to do it for a long enough period of time. This is a, one that really is, I think, interesting, right? Oh, I want to lose 10 pounds. I mean, that's a big goal for lots of people. I want to lose 10 pounds. How long have you made these changes? Oh, about six hours. <laughs> I've been working on it for about six hours. I think about, you know, in the next hour, we should be good. I'm going to step on the scale every day. That's not a good strategy for you, okay? And then the last piece, and you'll notice this is an exponential, right? It's the exponent. That means it's the most important piece of this. You have to do the right stuff. This is where people fail. I'll give you an example. There's lots of people who are doing stuff, and they've been doing it for a long time, and they're consistent, right? So I'll use the treadmill as an example. I've been on the treadmill every sort of day. I've been on the treadmill every day for 30 minutes for two years and I'm not getting any results. You're consistent, you've done it for a long enough period of time, why is it not working? Because you're doing the wrong things, right? Well, I've been working on this diet for a long time, I have a loaf of bread every day, and I, <laughs> right? You're being consistent, but you're consistently doing the wrong things. So tonight is about learning what are the right things, and then I'm gonna try and give you enough strategies and support to help you implement that stuff. So, if you've been to a Life by Design seminar, it wouldn't be a Life by Design seminar without the flower. So let's talk about it. When I talk about requirements, this is the easiest, simplest way to understand how we should, at least in my eyes, based on the best scientific evidence we have, live our lives. Remember what I said if you go in opposition to the requirements? What happens if we feed the flower oil instead of water? Does it grow or does it die? 
It dies, right? You can talk out loud. It's okay. It dies. If you were to press a rock on the stem of the flower, would it grow or would it die? It would die if you took away carbon dioxide. You get the idea. If you go in opposition, the flower begins to wilt. Here's what you don't do. You don't do what most people do with their health. You don't go, well, this flower is wilting. So let me get out my notepad. It's got brown leaves. The green is starting to become less green. I'm going to diagnose this flower with brown leaf itis. I bet there's a medication for that. You get the idea? I'm not suggesting, by the way, there's not a time and a place for medication. It can save lives, it can help lots of people. But let's be clear, it doesn't make us function better and get healthier. Would everybody agree with that? I mean, if you have a, a cabinet full of medications, would you agree that that's bad? Right, so if your cabinet is empty, that's good. Right, so we're all on the same page. Medication has a time and a place, but it doesn't make our body work better. What we need to do with this flower is do what? What's the solution to the flower problem? Water, sunlight, nutrients, carbon dioxide, take the rock off its stem and get the heck out of the way. Let the flower grow. Don't get out the green paint and try and paint the brown leaves. Let the flower repair and heal. That's what healing really is. Right? Healing isn't you know, going in and taking a medication and then shutting off the symptom. It's allowing dead, damaged cells in your body to build themselves healthier and new. And the longer that process continues, the more you become you. Have you ever noticed when you started eating better, your skin got better? Right? Your old skin disappeared. It's not there anymore. It's not as if it magically got better. It died and new skin came in its place. And that same process is happening in every single cell in your body, right? We look at things like a cut that heals, doesn't heal, the damaged cells are dead and new cells come in their place. And you see that on the surface of your body, it's the same thing happening in your body, at your organ level, at your heart, at your lungs, at your kidneys. So that's what I was giving you in terms of context. You have to do all the steps. So I'm gonna briefly hit on the steps and then we're gonna talk about food, okay? If you don't believe this, then doing the steps, you'll still get the results, but you're missing the point, right? The flower is supposed to be healthy. You're supposed to be healthy if you do the right things, okay? Always remind yourself, I'm supposed to be healthy. Why am I not healthy? It's because I'm doing the wrong things, or I've been doing it for too short of a time, or I'm not consistent enough. Go back to the principles. Don't look outside yourself for the solutions here. Oh, well, maybe it's something that I could find a medication for. That might help you, it might lower a symptom, it might shut off a message your body's giving you, but the real solution is to find out what you're not doing right and do it. What a logical concept, right? So, what are they? Tonight we're gonna to spend a lot of time on eat. So we'll spend a lot of time on what fuel is the factory specified fuel for your body. And I'll give you the reasons why, I'll give you action steps, and we designed something really cool for everybody who's here tonight. We designed a really nice, glossy printed grocery list. So if you're on Facebook Live, you don't get this. You'll have to come to the next one. You'll get a glossy, it's really nice. You can take that with you when you're getting groceries. It's got every single thing that we could imagine that would be Eat By Design approved on it. Okay, so it doesn't have recipes, but it has the actual ingredients for you. So when you go to the grocery store, if you don't see it on there, you gotta think twice about putting it in your, in your cart, okay? <laughs> the second one is, is Think. If anybody's been, who's been to Think By Design? Good. My favorite workshop. I love tonight. I love speaking to you. This is going to be great. Think is my favorite. Why? Simply because it helps you understand how to build a successful life. And that's what we do at Think. So make sure you get up to Think by Design and learn what you should be doing in that category. Move. How many people are Fit Club members? Awesome. How many people are Masters? Yeah, there we go. We got our Masters members. This is a, obviously a passion for us. It is teaching people how to train and move and doing that in a way that is for everybody. So, you know, Judy is starting to train. We got other people in the master's group. We have literally little tiny kids training. Walking is great. So if you're walking, that's wonderful. It's a great starting point. But if you've seen the Facebook Live video I did on this, walking is not enough. It's not enough, okay? I told you I'm not gonna sugarcoat this stuff. It's a great starting point, it's not enough. You'll never meet your movement requirements without strength training and proper mobility. Right? Those are fundamental to your body. In fact, if you take an athlete, and they've done these tests, where they'll do blood work from an Olympic athlete, so think about somebody who's training for their life, 
they'll do blood work, and within 24 hours of being immobile and sedentary, their blood work is already showing signs of stress. Within 24 hours, what does that tell us? Movement is required. It's literally like oxygen, okay? If you get less of it, your body functions less. Now, for those who come to Extraordinary Life Chiropractic, you recognize that we are not a traditional chiropractic office. Not that there's anything wrong with that, not that there's anything bad with that. It's really great for aches and pains and improving range of motion. We are a corrective care office. We look at structure. So when I put this in Life by Design, it was with this understanding that for your body to work right, you need to move, you need to eat, sure, you need to have a healthy mindset, but your brain needs to talk to your body. And if your structure is damaged, it can't do it, at least not at 100%. That's what we test for, that's what we measure, that's what we correct. Now, before we get into diet, how many people know what this building is? What is it? It's a Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story, and anybody who's been through my day one conversation, don't tell the answer to the story here, okay? <laughs> this building is constantly being repaired, so they're always having to fix the arches and the brickwork, why do they always have to fix the top stuff? There's a problem with the foundation. There's what we call a core problem. The core problems in your body are the rocks, structure, neurology, sleep, water, food, stress. You get it? You can't just be patching up all the arches in your health. You have to find out what those rocks are, get deep in, fix the core problems, and then optimize those components over a lifetime over a lifetime. <coughs> now, let's talk. Answer this question for me. Ready? Everybody talk out loud. You are what you... Eat. Wrong. I'm sorry. That's right. You are what you digest and absorb from what you eat. And the reason I say that is you can take all kinds of great nutrients and put them in the body but if you have a digestive and absorption problem, then you're not getting that nutrient base, okay? So that's just some context as we talk about the food itself. Understand that if there's damage to your gut, that's an underlying fundamental issue that needs to be corrected. And I'll give you some solutions to that. The other part of this is when I talk about the nervous system, when we're talking about structure, your gut literally has its own nervous system. It has its own brain. It's called the enteric nervous system. A lot of your immune system is regulated in your gut. Our moods are regulated in our gut. Okay, so understand that this piece of the puzzle is very, very, very important, okay? So let's talk about what Eat by Design is. Eat by Design is a strategy. Technically, it's, technically it is a diet. The actual technical terminology diet simply means food that is for that species, right? So if you've ever thought about it, each species has their own factory specified fuel, right? So when people will say things like, well, you know, gorillas are big and strong and they're vegetarians. That's because they're gorillas and their body's designed to consume a vegetarian diet, okay? So it's not about, well, they ate that, so we should eat this. It's what is the factory specified fuel for our bodies? What do we know is the best fuel for us? So what that means is what we're trying to do with this is tell you what food, and I want you to think of food as fuel, right? Not breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's fuel. That's all it is, right? You know, how many people have heard the concept of superfoods, right? You see the big long list, you get the greens and the acai berries, and let me tell you a secret here, and it shouldn't be a secret, but there is no superfoods, right? There's no food in the rainforest that's gonna make you healthy. So don't fall prey to buying into, you know, some $90 bag of acai berries that's gonna magically improve your health. There's no super foods, there's just super you. Right? Your body is designed to work right if you feed it fuel. There's antioxidants in acai berries, but there's antioxidants in lots of things that you don't have to spend $1,000 on to get the antioxidants. You understand? Let's simplify this process. So what foods are we best adapted to? So this is important, especially when we start talking about grains. And I'm in the heart of the Golden Acres here and opened a facility that talks about going grain free. So I understand the, the traction. So what are we best adapted to? I think the most important one is what are the most nutrient dense foods? So we'll talk about nutrient density tonight and why that's important. With the least amount of toxicity, 
So there's always a trade-off, and it's finding what are the best foods that we're adapted to that have the least amount of toxicity that'll move us towards a better expression of our normal function. That's it. So it's not saying there's not other strategies. Clearly, there's how many diets if you go to chapters? How many books is there on diet? A thousand. It's complicated, right? Oh my God, there's like a thousand books here. What am I supposed to choose? Within those books, there's probably a lot of truths. What I want to figure out and what I've figured out to our best ability is what are the best foods that meet the requirements, give us the most nutrients, cause the least amount of damage, and move us in the right direction. And then I want to show you to do it in a way that's actually really, really simple. Okay? Number one, I'm going to give you 10 Eat by Design principles, then I'm going to talk about how to do this stuff. Number one, <coughs> eat real food first. Right? Sounds like a crazy principle, but really, eat real food. The first principle means don't worry right now about the amount of food that you're eating. Okay? When people think about diet, weight loss, they automatically think about eating less. Right? That's very normal. I had someone, and she may be watching on Facebook Live, we had a conversation today. She was literally trying to lose weight. We did her food analysis. By the way, if you're an existing practice member or fit club member, we can do that for you. We did her analysis. She was eating seven to 800 calories a day. But her body had down-regulated its needs so much that she still felt like, I'm not losing weight. And of course you're not losing weight. Your body thinks you're dying. Yeah, your body thinks <laughs> you're dying. It's saying we cannot give up any of these nutrients that are embedded in our body because we need these to survive. So real food first. Here's one of the things I love about real food. It simplifies this process. And we'll talk about what real food is in a second, but here's the deal. How many cupcakes can you eat? Ryan, how many cupcakes can you eat? One. Beyond, come on. No more than one. All right, you're not a good example. Who can eat more than one cupcake? All right, Sharon, how many cupcakes can you eat? Yeah, three. I could eat probably eight or nine or I could just eat as many cupcakes as possible. I know John's the same. He's sitting back there. That's why he's quiet. <laughs> but, so let's say each cupcake is 500 calories and you could eat 10. Let's say five. I could eat five easy. That's 2,500 calories, right? How many steaks can you eat? Like legitimately how many steaks? A good sized steak like this, maybe one, right? You're not going to be crushing five steaks. The caloric intake of a steak like this might be five, six, seven hundred calories, maybe tops. So why is it that you can eat only 700 calories of a steak, but you can eat 2,500 plus calories of cupcakes. What's that? Yeah, because your body is getting information. All of your digestive function, I'm gonna go back to this, is neurological, right? It's all signaling, it's all hormone. So what happens is your brain gets information that says, you're not getting enough nutrients with the cupcakes, I'm still hungry. Now there's blood sugar regulation and other factors in here, but the reality is your brain's saying, I'm not full because there's no nutrition in that food. Whereas when you get the steak, it's jam-packed full of nutrition, protein, good fats like saturated fat. Yes, that is a good fat. We'll talk about that. Fat-soluble vitamins, really, really important. So how do you know what's real? Look for the foods that are the least processed. Simple things like one-ingredient foods, right? Steak, apple. Carrots. You get the idea? If the food has been processed, then it's already multiple steps away from its normal state. If it has a barcode, probably a reasonable chance that it's been processed, unless again, it's a one ingredient food. So I don't want you in the beginning to think about how much food you're eating. I want you to think about what food you're eating, okay? Quality over quantity. At some point, yes, 12 months from now, if you have different goals and you have to make some individualization to your diet, Sure, we may look at things like how much food, but it doesn't matter until you get the right quality of food organized and corrected. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, probably the simplest thing for you to start this process is every single meal, build your meal around a protein source. Right? And your menu has a whole list of protein sources on there. When I talk about protein, I want you to eat tip to tail. So what that means is a lot of people choose protein and what they do, they get the leanest cuts because we've been taught that fat is bad for us, right? Fat's not bad for us. In fact, the fattier cuts of meat have all kinds of amazing nutrients and not to mention they taste amazing. Right? Why wouldn't I want to eat those? So once the fear is out of the way, which it will be by the end of tonight, tip to tail. So again, eating not just the chicken breast and the pork loin, 
but eating all the different cuts of meat. You can also uh, do bone broths and other ways to start to break that down. That's more of the strategies and tactics. We'll get into that stuff as we go. But eat protein in every meal. Now, it doesn't mean that your whole plate is going to be, you know, like uh, Fred Flintstone, you know, when he pulls up to the, yeah, and they fill it up with the big rib. No. Think about your plate in thirds. That's probably a great place to start. One third protein, one third fibrous carbohydrates, so vegetables, one third starchy carbohydrate. Your fat sources, you'll get plenty of because they're going to be in the protein, right? They're going to come inside the protein. Or if you're, say, doing a salad dressing, you might use olive oil or coconut oil or something along those lines. Thirds, all right? Protein, carbohydrate, and vegetables. All right, I'll tell you what's a, what you're allowed to pick in the carbohydrate version. Now, here's why you should do it for a couple extra bonus reasons. If all you're looking to do is boost your metabolism as fast as possible, protein's going to do that for you, right? If you were to look at the food intake and start to actually get that worked out, right away, you're going to see an increase in metabolism because it takes more energy to break down protein than it does fat and carbohydrates. So right away, your body's to use more calories to break the protein down. Number two, back to the cake and the steak, right? It signals your brain to say that you are full. This is why protein is also great. And for those people who are working on things like weight loss, diabetes, and some other conditions, it affects and positively benefits your insulin sensitivity, which is a huge one if weight loss is on your agenda, okay? Number two, actually let me just talk about this real quick. This is the hierarchy principle. This applies to everything, because here's what people will say. Here's your objections already. Well, I can't get organic meat, or I can't afford organic meat, right? The solution is start at the top, work your way down. So at the top, you know, let's say for meats, these are all, yeah, of course you want to get wild game and healthy animals and, you know, uh, grass-fed beef, but maybe you can't access that. You can still go to the grocery store. It's okay. I still want you to choose meat over bread. You get the idea? Hierarchy, okay? If you can't do the gold standard, go down to the next level. If you can't do that level, go down to the next level. You don't go from here to here just because you can't do the top one, okay? So that's important as we go through. Eat your vegetables. So we talked about a third of your plate is going to be vegetables or fibrous carbohydrates, right? So vegetables are carbohydrates. Eat by design is not low carb. We hear that a lot. Oh, so this is a, you, you, this is a low carb diet. No, carbohydrates are good in the right amounts, in the right kinds. What we endorse is what's called a carbohydrate appropriate diet, right? And that's going to be dependent on a lot of things, your health levels, it's going to be dependent on your goals, and it's going to be dependent on your activity levels, right? Another reason to train, so you can eat more good food, right? It's a nice bonus. Now, they're interesting, I think this is really nice to know, there's probably not a single diet of those thousand books that doesn't say that vegetables are good for you, right? So we know we're probably on to something there. The opposite, though, is that most people think that because vegetables are good for you and they have a lot of uh, antioxidants and other valuable nutrients and minerals, that somehow we're not getting enough if you don't eat, you know, like this basket of vegetables every day. And that becomes stressful, too. Third of your plate is fine, right? If you literally had a big salad every day, you would already meet almost all your recommended daily allowances of almost every single nutrient. All right, in terms of what's going to be coming inside the vegetables. All right? So, fat. Let's talk about this one because this is one that is another deal breaker for people. They go, great, okay. So this is making sense, but I have to eat more fat? Yes. Fat does not make you fat. Embed that in your head. Fat does not make you fat. Now, it's actually a great marketing tactic, though. Right? Fat, and then it's called fat. Well, okay, that makes sense. If I eat fat, I get fat. That's not true. All right now, where did it start? Let's briefly hit on this. This guy's name is Ansel Keys, and I don't know if anybody remembers him. 19, I want to say early 60s, mid 60s, did a study called the Seven Country Study. Here's what he found out. He took seven countries, and he found that the countries that had the highest heart disease also had the highest saturated fat intake. So he said, oh, look at that. You have more saturated fat intake. You have more heart disease. Guess what? Saturated fat causes heart disease. He was on the cover of Time magazine, and it started an entire trend of low fat. The problem was there was 23 countries in the study. 
he left 16 of them out. And so when you actually plotted the data from all 23 countries, there was actually no relationship with saturated fat intake and heart disease, but the damage was done, right? In fact, he changed his tune years, years later. He came out and said, I was wrong. I didn't include all the data, but it was too late. You know, we got to the point where, I mean, everybody's looking at the blue label, right? What's the one with the lowest fat? Don't worry about that. That's not what you should be paying attention to. In fact, probably 30, 30 to 40 percent of your diet is going to come from fat. That's scary when you think about fat making you fat. Okay, so I'm going to give you the breakdown in a bit. We eat in North America the least amount of fat in the entire world because of this fat phobic craze that we've all been essentially trained to think about, and yet we have more chronic disease than anywhere else in the world. At the core of this, when you eat less fat, what do you eat more of? Processed carbohydrates. Not just carbohydrates, let's not vilify carbohydrates here. Processed carbohydrates. That means things that come in a box. That means your cereals, your granola bars, right? All the things that we've been taught are good for us because they're whole grain. Processed carbohydrates, right? When you break those down, what do they become? Sugar. That's right, there's still sugar and you're still forcing your body to adapt to that when carbohydrates are in a whole food source or what we call a safe starch, they function differently within the body. So we'll get to carbohydrates in a second. Now, what are the fats? We've heard of omega-3s and 6s. There's three six and 9s. We've heard of our saturated fats. So what ones should we be taking in? If you were to eat a blend throughout the day of healthy animal products, avocado, some olive oil, some coconut oil, some butter, you would hit all the good fats that you would want to get in your diet for the most part and you'd get them in a decent quantity if you just had you know your protein maybe a little pat of butter on your potatoes or sweet potatoes or whatever your safe starches are olive oil on your salad and avocado a tablespoon of coconut oil maybe in a protein shake real simple strategies to get all of those fats so you don't have to go beyond that you'll get everything just from that so one of the fears people have is what anybody what about my cholesterol? This falls into a similar category. Now, this is a five-hour seminar on cholesterol metabolism and how it affects you, but nonetheless, here's the point. Cholesterol is a requirement for your body. Think about this. Your cells are made with cholesterol in them. How can that be something that is so damaging and devastating to your body? That's like saying, well, my skin has protein in it, so protein's bad for me. No, it's in you, all right? So when you look at someone who has heart disease and you see a plaque, all right, it's very easy. It's kind of like the fat, fat thing. You go and you go, look, that person had a heart attack. I cut them open. There's a plaque. I cut it open. It has cholesterol in it. Must be the problem. Your cholesterol that's inside those plaques, think of your plaquing like a scab, all right? The scab is not the problem. The plaquing is part of the healing process. So when your body is stressed and inflamed, your body gets damaged. So the arterial walls, so your inside, literally arteries, get damaged. Your body goes to heal them. Part of the healing process is cholesterol. Horse cholesterol gets vilified because when that gets too big and it shuts off blood flow and you die of a heart attack, we cut it open. We say, look, there's cholesterol in there. That must be the problem. Now, let's look at the data. They've done lots of these studies, obviously, because we see literally tens of millions of people on statin medication. Tens of millions, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's the biggest, I'm pretty sure it's the number one selling category of medication in the pharmacy world. Now, is there a small group that may benefit from a statin medication? There is, but it's literally males who have had a heart attack. There's this whole list of categories. And for one person to have a benefit from that statin drug, over, I believe it's over a thousand people, I think it's one out of a thousand, would have to be on the medication. That means the other 999 would have no benefit and potential side effects from that. So the reason it looks like statin medications work is because if you take them, guess what it does to your cholesterol? It drops it and you go, look, my cholesterol is falling. Great, so now you're gonna die at the same rate as everybody else, but with high or low cholesterol. Right? So take a great study, I think it's called the Nurses Study, 
70,000 people, 35,000 women over 10 years, the women with the highest cholesterol, guess what? Live the longest. Why? Because cholesterol is a nutrient for your body. Anybody who's taken statin medications recognizes that your brain doesn't work the same, you have muscle pain. Why? Because you're shutting off your body from producing a nutrient that it needs. Okay? So I won't go into that too much other than to say it's worthy of a conversation with either myself or your physician. But again, get the right action steps in place first. Get your body working better. This is often the deal breaker. So let's spend a few minutes on this one. Okay? Why? Now, you've noticed the first four steps. We've spent time talking about what to do. Right? And if you didn't notice that, we spent time talking about what to do. Here's why. When it comes to dieting, the first thing people typically do is don't do this, don't do this, don't stop this, don't eat that. That doesn't work, right? Because now you're taking out something you have become accustomed to, it's a habit for you, and what are you replacing it with? Nothing. So you're still in the state of a void. You still need something, and typically you'll just make worse choices, and then it spirals again, and you go through that yo-yo. The best way to do this is focus more on what to do. It's very similar to training or getting your spine looked at. I'm not worried about what you're doing right now. I'm worried about getting your body working better. We'll talk about all the little things as you go on. So now let's pretend you've done the first four steps. You're eating real food, you're building your meals around protein, you're eating vegetables, and you've increased your fat intake. Now once all that's done, yes, we can talk about this. But don't make this a deal breaker. Don't go home and say, well, he said I can't eat grains, so that's it, I'm out. What I'm saying is go through the first steps first and get here. Now, I'll give you a real world example. People say, so you never eat bread. No, I, I've eaten bread. I just don't eat gluten containing bread. And we'll talk about gluten here in a second. I eat bread that maybe is another type of source, essentially looking for the least toxic version of it, but that might be once every three months, maybe. I like, you know, a good grilled cheese sandwich or almond butter on a piece of toast, whatever it is. But the point is, it's not a staple, okay? So, why? Number one, we are not yet adapted to grains, right? We haven't really had exposure to grains for an excessively long time, so the digestive process, we are not adapted to. Now, that doesn't mean in another 100,000 years, we can't live off bread. Maybe we can, but I'm not gonna be around in 100,000 years, and neither are you. The question is, what is best for us now? I actually think the second reason is the best reason, okay? The best reason is this. There's nothing in a grain that you can't get in another food source with less damage and toxicity. That's the point. People say, well, but they have B vitamins. So do vegetables. Right? Well, well they have this. So do, so do vegetables. So does a piece of steak. So does, you get the idea? So if you have to choose one over the other, really the only reason you would choose grains is either have it or you like the taste. Great. Yeah, I, I love the taste too. I'm not suggesting I don't love a loaf of bread. I grew up eating bread like many people here. So there's ways to modify this and improve this, but here's the point. For a lot of us, those food toxins, which is basically what the proteins in grains are, and some of them are more potentially damaging than others, but those food toxins affect your gut, which we're going to talk about next. And they affect your body in ways that either you know or more importantly, you may not even know right now. So you potentially don't know how sensitive you are to these food toxins. Now I'm not the guy, I don't come from the school of, you know, if you have a grain, you're gonna die. If you have gluten, you're gonna die. This is not about being gluten-free, which I think is a terrible idea, by the way, because gluten-free cupcakes are not good for you, right? <laughs> gluten-free pancakes are not good for you. Gluten-free bread is still not good for you. It's not a whole food source. It's not full of good nutrient dense, you know, nutrition. So why, let's talk about gluten because I think that's kind of the elephant in the room for a lot of people. Gluten itself isn't a problem. It's one of the proteins in gluten. So there's a protein called gliadin. What that protein does is this, is that protein in some people damages the gut. Remember I talked about how important the gut was? Imagine your gut is like this, has what's called tight junctions. So the gut has these tight junctions and gliadin, which is this protein, 
causes a, a basically a reaction that can break down the gut wall, all right, and it can create permeability. And the gut is supposed to be selectively permeable. That means your brain and the nervous system that wraps around it determines what passes through. But when the gut lining gets damaged, everything passes through. And when bigger proteins get through, guess what the body's immune system does to them? It attacks them. Does anybody know what that condition is called or what that group of conditions is called? It would, there'd be inflammation involved. It's an autoimmune disease. So what happens is you're setting up the stage for major, major problems. Now, you may have a gut problem and you have an autoimmune response and it could be affecting all kinds of different things. It could be affecting your brain. It could be playing a role in Alzheimer's. It could be playing a role in other neurodegenerative disorders. It could be playing a role in IBS. It could be playing a role in Crohn's. It's not just gut issues, lupus, right? There's a whole list of autoimmune disorders that at the core have some type of gut permeability. Just go on Google and type in gut permeability. You'll see hundreds of peer-reviewed research articles looking at what happens, is when, happens when you damage the gut, okay? So you might think, it's no big deal. I can go eat a loaf of bread and I'm okay. You can also smoke a cigarette and you're okay. You're not gonna die today, that was the point, right? And therein lies the challenge with all the things you're learning today. You can do anything you want, but what you're doing is having an effect even if you're not feeling it. And that's where having knowledge and information is so important. So, last couple, grains are addictive, sugar is sugar. Six, remove sugar. Do we have to talk about this one at all? No? Okay. If you didn't know, if you start the day with a glass of orange juice, there's just as much sugar in that as there is, as there would be in a can of Coke, right? And don't worry about, oh, well, I use agave nectar, right? It's still sugar, right? Oh, I use maple syrup. It's still sugar, okay? I told you I was going to be direct. And I'm not saying there's, you know, if you watch our videos, Damon did a video about protein uh, muffins with uh, Andy. And yes, we do some off-track treats, we'll call them, and try and choose ingredients that are non-toxic, but we're not fooling ourselves. I don't think that, you know, grain-free pancakes are good for me. I just think they're less bad for me. You get the idea? Right? When we put out the grain-free cookies, it's not like, oh, wow, these are good for you? Oh, cool. Can I eat six? You can. They're not good for you. They're just less bad for you. They don't have food toxins in them, but they still have sugar in them, okay? So important, especially with kids, right? Oh, what can I feed my kids? My kids like bread. I get it. My kids like chocolate. Mine like chocolate too, but it doesn't mean that's what we feed them all the time. So as parents, we have to make that stand and say, you're not going to like this, but this is what we're going to eat. And it, it, it's interesting to me when families say, well, my kids won't eat that. And I think about being a parent and I think, my kid doesn't have a choice, right? I don't know about you, but this is what they're gonna eat. And until they're out of my house and making their own decisions, this is the only food they're eating, whether they like it or not. Now, does that mean we don't go off track or Andy doesn't have a piece of chocolate? Sure we do, but we're not talking about we have granola bars every day or they have cereal for breakfast. She doesn't get that stuff because that's our decision and you can make the same decisions whether they like it or not. And the point is, it's going to impact them in a positive way 50 years from now. It's worth the fight. I'm telling you, it's worth the fight. Earn your carbs. So, people, let's talk about this one because this is important. Where is a low-carbohydrate diet appropriate? Weight loss, right? Low-carbohydrate diet is great for weight loss. Um, PCOS, right? Polycystic ovarian syndrome and other insulin issues, diabetes, right? Neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease, right? There's been studies on a ketogenic diet, which is basically just a low carbohydrate diet, on people who have epilepsy, seizure disorders, okay? So the point is, there's some conditions that are at the core, a blood sugar regulation issue, right? They call Alzheimer's type three diabetes, right? It used to be thought that, oh, it's just it's a brain, you know, Type 3 diabetes, there's a blood sugar regulation issue that's affecting the brain. Get it? It's bigger than just, oh, I, I need to lose 10 pounds. Okay? So that's great. Low carbohydrate, wonderful. When is it not great? If you're training a lot and you're super active, and I don't mean walking, I mean training. Like if you're training 
a low carbohydrate diet is probably not going to be best for you. If you have adrenal fatigue, probably not good for you. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, probably not good for you. Okay, so again, some of this stuff has to be customized and that's why you have coaches. That's why you have doctors. We're here as a facility to teach you, to work with you, to help you. You can try to go it on your own, that's okay. But again, this is what we do. It's what we spend every day doing. So what I tell people is earn your carbs. If you're training hard and you wanna just be healthy, you can eat 30, 40% safe starches. You can have that 30 year plate with potatoes and sweet potatoes and squashes and root vegetables. You don't have to go, oh, I can't eat carbs, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gain a pound of fat. The opposite is, even though a low carbohydrate diet is good for fat loss and diabetes, high carbohydrate or moderate carbohydrate diet is not the cause of gaining weight. This is important. So just because it's good for fat loss doesn't mean that eating carbs is going to make you gain weight. All right? That's important because people think, well, if low carb is going to make me lose weight, then I shouldn't eat any carbs because I'm going to gain weight. Not necessarily true. If you have a healthy metabolism, if you are generally healthy and you just want to maintain where you're at, a moderate <laughs> carbohydrate diet is perfect for you. If you find yourself training hard and you're getting tired, fatigued, your recovery is poor, increase your carbohydrate intake. All right? And again, some of this needs customization. What are the safe starches? Basically, potatoes, sweet potatoes, root vegetables, anything without a husk on it. So that takes out things like brown rice, right? Those are the ones people, oh, isn't brown rice good for you? Yeah, if you want to irritate your gut lining, then sure. Right? If you want to go with rice, choose white rice. It has no husk, it's just pure starch. Right? So in that sense, it's nutrient dense without the toxic portion. Okay? So the more you understand the principles, the easier it is to make these choices. Supplements, what am I supposed to take? Almost nothing. Right? If I come to your house and I see like a million supplements, I'm not gonna be happy because you got sold a million supplements that you didn't need. If you're eating real food, there's going to be very little that you don't get. So we call the essentials, the essentials because they fill the gaps. What are the gaps? Unless you're outside getting sun exposure without sunscreen, which is a whole other conversation, you're probably gonna be deficient to some degree in vitamin D. And especially if you live in Canada and you don't go south like a bunch of people I see here every year, then you're definitely gonna be deficient in vitamin D at some point. So, depending on your sufficiency, technically you should be tested for your vitamin D levels to see where you're at on the scale. That's the only real objective way to do it. But most people, I'll generally start them around four to 5,000 units of vitamin D a day. Now if you're in the sun and you're outside all the time, it may be less, but again, this is why you have to get tested. I take 5,000 units a day. I have mine tested recently. I'm right at just beautiful sweet spot, all right? Vitamin D Council, a bunch of PhDs all agree 5,000 units a day is a starting point. Or for children, 35 units per pound of body weight. Which is, you know, Andy takes a single drop every day, which is 1,000 units. Just to put it in perspective, you make 20,000 units by being in the sun for 20 minutes. Right? So, trust me, 5,000 units a day, you're not going to die. It is a fat-soluble vitamin, which means it can accumulate into your body, but you would have to take thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of units. Now your vitamin D is important, it's not just for your bones, guys. It's for everything in your body, immune system, mental state, right? It's a requirement. Uh, the omega-3 to 6 ratio, we saw that in the fats. It's not about getting more 6s and 9s, you already get all that stuff. If you eat any type of processed foods, you're getting a bunch of these 6s and 9s. It's the 3s that we're going to be deficient in, and it's really about creating a ratio that's balanced between 3s and 6s. Why? If that is out of balance, you are going to have inflammation. Right? There's an inflammatory pathway in the body. When we get too far on the sick side, we create inflammation, which we know is at the heart of all kinds of things like chronic illness, disease, right? heart conditions, diabetes. It's a factor. So how do you do it? Either eating really good quality animal sources, right? or you're topping up with a pharmaceutical grade fish oil supplement. Right? Something that is gonna be quality, that's gonna be tested, and that's gonna taste great. Right? We use the bonfire fish oil. If you've ever watched the videos, Andy bites the capsules and eats it like it's candy. Right? And it really is, it tastes literally, you can probably take a sample, um, it literally tastes like lemon meringue pie. Okay? And the last one, probiotics. Yogurt, probably not gonna just cut it. Right? Probably adding in a broad spectrum probiotic. You wanna be replenishing the gut. 
all right? If you're eating good amounts of carbohydrates, which we talked about, you're also going to get the right type of fiber that those bacteria eat, and that's going to create better probiotics in the gut as well, all right? Other quick convenience ones, I take protein on a regular basis just because it's better to take that than to eat a chocolate bar at night. So I'll have yogurt with a scoop of protein and a little bit of cocoa, and it tastes like chocolate pudding, okay? And then I take magnesium. But again, what are you deficient in? Shouldn't be much if you're meeting all the requirements, okay? Last couple, what do we do with dairy? Dairy is a gray area, all right? So just hold on. Dairy is a gray area. Why? The dairy proteins for some people are highly allergenic. Right? So you've seen kids who take dairy out, right? And they do a lot better. It's because the proteins in dairy can be a problem. Now, unless you can get a raw source of dairy, which we have had in the past, I would stick to things like full fat dairy. So they're gonna be lower in protein, right? Less potentially allergenic. Um, or fermented dairy, <coughs> yogurt, right? So butter, yogurt, cream. What I would take out of your diet, hands down, unequivocally, without question, would be pasteurized milk. Hands down, without question, there is nothing good about pasteurized milk, at least that you can't get in another food source with less potential impact, okay? Just the sugar content in milk is extremely, extremely high, and then you add in the potential for allergies, extremely, extremely high, okay? And the last one, and then I'm gonna go through what to do. For now, stop counting calories, okay? For now. I'm not saying there's not value in food log, there's not value in tracking things, there is, but not until you get your food quality worked out, right? So if your diet looks like this, cereal, loaf of bread, right, pasta, and you want to track your cat, what's that? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. <laughs> and you want to track your calories and have me do your nutrient profile, waste of time. Because we already know what needs to happen. We need to eat real food. That's your first step. Once you've been doing that, then we can say, all right, let's look at this. All right, what's your carbohydrate intake? What are your goals? Do you have any other health conditions? And then we can start tailoring it as time goes on. But the nice thing is when you eat real food, your body will generally tell you what is enough. Okay? If anything, I would say when you start making this change, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to undereat. It's a pretty good chance anybody who makes this change is not going to eat enough. You'll start taking out processed foods, but you won't replace them with more protein and fat or safe starches. You'll just take out the processed foods and keep eating everything else you're eating. So you're going to get hungry, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get what we call hangry. Hungry and angry joined together, right? Hangry. Yeah. So what can I eat? Now you're at the point you go, so what am I supposed to eat? And I find it funny that when people come to Eat by Design, they often walk away saying, it sounds really restrictive. I said, great, so tell me what you had for breakfast today. And I said, well, I had oatmeal. And what'd you have yesterday? Oatmeal. And what'd you have a month ago? Oatmeal. And what'd you have last year? Oatmeal with berries. <laughs> right? You're already eating the same things every single day and every single week. This is no more restrictive. It's just using better sources that are going to move you in the right direction. So here's how you do it. What do I do? Rule of thirds. Protein. What are my protein sources? Essentially, if it swims, if it flies, if it runs, that's a pretty good indicator of what your protein sources are. In addition, eggs, um, wild game, all those things would fall within proteins. Now, people might say, well, I can get proteins from peas and legumes. You can, but it's not the same type of protein as in animal products. So if you have questions about, well, can I do this as a vegetarian? Just come talk to me after, I'll answer those individually. I'm talking about what's best versus what you can do. You can do this and not eat meat. It just won't be the best in terms of the nutrient density that you're going to get, okay? Second, replace your grains and your pasta and rices, brown rices specifically, with vegetables. Add your healthy fats, butter, olive oil, coconut oil, and then add your safe starches. That's it. Now, one of the things I'm gonna introduce you guys to is a 30-day challenge online. You'll get recipes, you'll get videos, it's all free, you can follow that for 30 days and it'll help you. Follow the Facebook page, there's lots of stuff there, we're always posting recipes. It's more about how do I take these res or ingredients on my card, how do I take those and learn how to cook with them for me and my family? 
going to take a little bit of time for some of you. For some of you, you're already doing a large part of it. It's just a matter of tweaking a few things, finding some of your staples and finding replacements for those. What do I do for pasta? Buy a spaghetti squash. Make the same pasta sauce, put it on the spaghetti squash. Right? Can I still have pizza? Sure. You can buy and make gluten-free pizza. Right? We do that. It's really not difficult. The point is, it's just about learning and acquiring the knowledge. But again, it's worth it. And I keep going back to that. It's worth it. Now, meat, fowl, fish, seafood, eggs, animal fats, oils, and vegetables, abandon. Eat as much as you want. Because how many steaks can we eat? One. Right? Limit. Now, this is going to be you know, what is appropriate for us based on our goals. Roots, tubers, bulbs. So what falls into the safe starches? Beets, carrots, parsnips, potatoes, rutabaga, squash. You get the idea. Safe starches. Okay? Nuts and seeds should be used as a condiment. I want you to think about nuts and seeds like mustard. How much mustard do you eat? You do this. You put some on something. That's how you use nuts and seeds. You don't buy a bag of almonds and eat it for lunch. But you, well, you might. The problem is with seed intake and nut intake is they're super high calorie, so very nutrient dense, which is good, but nuts and seeds are actually extremely high in omega-6s, so we talked about the omega-3 to 6 ratio. All right? The problem is this. If I were to have to go out, let's say into the wild, and I had to get my almonds, how many almonds could I get and process and eat at one time? Probably not a bag like this. You get the idea? So they should be used as condiments, right? A little bit here, a little bit there. Handful here, a handful there. Fruit intake. Again, back to what are your goals? If you're healthy, have a great metabolism, if you're training, yeah, you can have a few pieces of fruit every day, no big deal. But if your metabolism is messed up, if you are moving towards a low carb type intervention, then you're gonna wanna restrict your fruit intake to one, maybe two pieces a day and really focus on the fats, the proteins, and the safe starches, okay? Reason being, this is another conversation, but the way fruit sugar is processed in your body is differently from safe starches, okay? One is fructose, and the other one is not. What do we want to avoid? We want to avoid, again, most of our cereal grains. With the grains, think hierarchy. Wheat at the top, and gluten-containing grains. White rice at the bottom. Right? So if I was going to include some type of grain, we'll still have white rice, we'll still have sushi. You get the idea? It's basically a starch, and if you have a healthy metabolism and you're active in your training, it shouldn't be a big deal. It's not going to irritate the gut or damage the gut. Right? Now, here's what you're going to do, at least if you want to get results. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to write down, I'm going to give you a sheet of paper in a second, but what I suggest you do is somewhere you write down what you're doing. You write down a goal. And don't make your goal lose 10 pounds. Make your goal process oriented. I'm going to eat protein with every meal. Right? I'm going to eat more avocados. I'm going to take fish oil. I'm going to, you know, train. Whatever it is, pick something for the next 90 days. My suggestion is, and it depends on your personality type, for some of you, you're just gonna, you're gonna give it. You're gonna go, I'm doing all of this. I'm in, a thousand percent. And if that's your personality, great, you should do that. For others, you should pick one thing. And you should master that one thing before you pick the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. I've personally been doing this for literally 10, 11 years. It's an ongoing process. Sometimes I'm at 80% eat by design. Right now I'm at maybe 95% eat by design. What's my other 5%? Maybe an off-track treat, a grain-free snack, ice cream, right? But again, it's extremely rare. And that's not to say I'm restricting myself. It's just not a choice that I make because my goals are something different and I want to accomplish my goals. This is also why knowing what you're trying to accomplish is really, really important, okay? Clean out your pantry. It's in there. I know. I haven't even been to your house and I know what's in there. Clean out your pantry. Get it out of there. So if you're going to do the 30-day challenge, box it all up, put it outside, take it to a shelter, do something, because I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of willpower. Right? If it is in there, it's going down. 
right? <laughs> we have these grain-free cookies here every day from uh, Jody's daughter, Laurel, makes these grain-free cookies. And every day I have to walk by them, and it's only because you guys, my practice members and patients, want to eat them that I restrict myself from consuming them. But I could eat every one of them without even thinking about it. Be prepared for the low-carb flu. I said that's kind of the hangry part. So when you start taking out processed foods and you don't replace them with more fat and protein and other safe starches, you may start feeling poor. You may have mood swings. So warn your partner or spouse as well if they're not doing this with you. Listen, I might be hangry for a little bit. It's okay. If you notice that happening, increase your carbohydrate intake, increase your fat and protein, make sure you're getting enough nutrients. Okay, that's a big one. You know, I talked about this as a blueprint. I encourage you to do all the steps. Now, does that mean you have to join the Fit Club? No, but you need to be strength training, right? Does that mean that you have to, you know, be a member of the corrective care office? No, but you should have your spine and nervous system looked at. It's just a normal part of the body functioning properly, at least the way we look at things. Make sure you have protein and fat, and make sure you celebrate, because this is not going to be an overnight process. You're going to have to jump in, you're going to fall off, you're going to fail, and then you're going to want to get back on. Now, 30-day challenge, I will send you an email in the next few days. There'll be a link to it, follow it, put your email address in. For 30 days, you'll get videos or access to videos, and it'll be our Eat By Design coach, Kristen McKaig, who's a holistic nutritionist. She is the Eat By Design, essentially, CEO. She'll be doing these videos, and you'll actually be able to see everything and interact and learn more about what we talked about tonight. Look to our Facebook page. There's always things there, okay? Coaching. How many people follow sports? That's it? How many people follow sports? Come on. All right. Every single high-level performer in any area has a coach. I told you I was going to be blunt. You can do this on your own. You don't need my help if you want to put in the time and the effort. If you want to do the research, if you want to be online, if you want to be reading things, it's all there for you. All right, I'll send you the Eat by Design manual. If you want support, then either ask for it, come in for a case review, join the Fit Club, do something that is going to give you access to coaching. Okay, so when I give you your feedback form, you'll see a couple boxes there. If you want our help, take advantage. Now, I'm gonna walk you down a path. Francois is gonna pass out some feedback forms. If you can do me a favor and take three minutes and just write on there what you got out of today, how you would make it better, all right? Then I actually sit and read all these things and mull over them because I'm super OCD perfectionist. <laughs> so I do actually take into consideration what you're putting on there. Also, if your email's on there, then I can send you all of the stuff, okay? When you leave, you'll get your grocery list Dr. Zoe's gonna give that to you, all right? So while she's passing these out, I wanna take you down this little path and do an experiment with you, okay? You ready? This is you. You're one of these two people right now, all right? You're either Jill or you're Jack. How many people know the Robert Frost poem? Two roads diverged in the woods. Anybody know that one? Two roads diverged in the woods and I took the path left, path left traveled this is what I want you to think about. I want you to take 85. Some people have done this before, so you, you're going to do this. Everybody has a phone, right? You ready? You're going to need a calculator. Take 85. You ready? Take 85. Do this experiment. Everybody grab your phone. Take 85. Here we go. Ready? 85 minus your age. Minus your age. Trust me, this one's shocking. Minus your age, times 365. Does anybody know what that number is? It's the approximate number of days you have left in your life. It's the approximate number of days you have left in your life. Here's the point. I told you I wasn't going to sugarcoat it. That's real. 85 minus your age times 365. That is the approximate number of days you have left in your life. That's right. 
So, for me, for me, I'll finish up with this, guys. For me, when I turn 41, I'll be 42 soon. When I turn, turn 41 and we had our second child, and I don't know about if other people have experienced this when they had kids, but it felt like my mortality went from here to here. And it just became so much more real to me that it made me do things like open the center, right? To be able to stand up in front of a group and say, listen, this is what you need to do in order to get the best results. Because what I didn't want to do was I didn't want to go home at night and lay in bed and think about all the people that I sugarcoated it for just so they didn't feel bad about the things that they were currently doing in their life. And anybody who knows me, and I see people in here already who were in for checkups today, I probably already didn't sugarcoat it for you today, right, Ron? Exactly. This is your life, guys. And obviously, I can't help you unless you want me to help you, but I want you to be aware that it really is this. And the last slide I'll leave you with is that's where it ends up, right? It ends up at one or the other, right? You're either gonna live your life and get to the end, and you're gonna be that candle that burns bright all the way to the end and then just goes out, your time's up. That's what I'm going for. Or you're gonna be that candle that is already flickering. It's already on its way down, right? What's your life gonna be like at the end? Is it gonna be this? Is it gonna be this? Right? Obviously, that's going to be up to you and the choices you make today, tomorrow, and for the next 50 years of your life. So guys, take some time. Fill those out. If there's anything you need from us, put it on the forms. That's the best place for it. When you leave, pass those to Dr. Francois or just leave them on your chair, actually, guys. We'll do it that way. And stop and see Dr. Zoe and you'll get your Eat by Design menu. All right, and make sure you put your email on there so we can go ahead and send you everything that we're going to send you in terms of the resources. And for those people who are listening on Facebook Live, next time we do Eat by Design, you can come out and get all the resources here.